Okay, so uh, my name is Jaroslav Tula. Um, I'm a founder of NetBeams and initial architect, but uh, the uh, most <coughs> the part of NetBeans that I like the most is called NetBeans platform. That's the core of NetBeans. Uh, because NetBeans is modular software, so you have a core, and then you have, for example, support for Java, support for PHP. So I these days call myself NetBeans platform architect. But I'm not here to talk about the platform that much. What I'd like to do is to introduce uh, you uh, a new technology that uh, I think is going to change the uh, world. <laughs> uh, we will do it in uh, incremental fashion, so uh, I expect your questions. If you don't have questions, we finish the session. So let me uh, speak for a while and make some interview, uh, introduction, and uh, then basically questions. Please prepare your questions. So here is overview of uh, various ways how you can create uh, your UI application, application which communicates with the user, with some uh, user interface. Uh, of course, because uh, I designed NetBeans platform, uh, I uh, strongly believe in desktop applications and the need of desktop applications. Uh, but the problem with desktop applications is they are useful if you sit on your computer, but, well, they are not that cool anymore. People would like to have their application running on their phones, on their tablets. And desktop applications are not uh, that great for them. The other UI, I call it UI of yesterday, is uh, classical web applications. When you have a web server which serves uh, HTML pages, and all the logic is happening on a server. The problem with that is that those applications are sort of static. Uh, if you, uh, in such application, if you want to change something on the user screen, they just need to click a link and uh, the connection goes to the server, server serves back another page and so on and so on. So these days, it, such application will be uh, sort of archaic. So, uh, I think these days uh, most of the UI development is happening on mobiles. And, uh, well, thanks to uh, Google uh, and uh, Google's support for Android, uh, we have a version of a flavor of Java. I, uh, Oracle would probably disagree with that statement, but I think we have a flavor of Java. Uh, running on a majority of mobile phones, thanks to Android. And uh, basically these days, if you think about client Java development, many people, most of the people will probably think that Android is synonymous for client-side Java. Of course, uh, there are also uh, applications for the browser, so-called HTML5 applications, which are not static which basically just serve HTML page and the logic is happening inside of the browser. Um, of course, that usually involves JavaScript. Uh, and, uh, well, you will probably notice I'm not a big fan of JavaScript. I think it's a horrible language. Um, and uh, so I think people shouldn't be doing such things. Uh, but still, uh, we somehow need to achieve uh, Vora, which uh, used to be the original vision of Java. Write once, run anywhere. We want to write our application once and ha have it running everywhere. So how can we do it? <clears throat> so I have a feeling that these days there is a uh, battle going on between at least two camps. The guys providing browsers and various uh, technologies based on the internals of the browsers like uh, Node.js uh, or uh, Cordova. And on the other side of the front are those guys which like Java and uh, want to defend Java. 
So, for example, Android or various uh, application servers. And uh, thanks uh, for work of RoboVM guys, I also can include uh, iOS here because you can code Java for iOS. They basically ported the Android uh, runtime to iOS. So the question is, how the war will end? Because uh, sometimes uh, when there is a strike from one, uh, one side of the, of the front, uh, they are basically trying to push, uh, somehow capture uh, um, a part of the uh, landscape that is occupied by the other company. So for example, Node.js guys are trying to sneak into the server space and pretend that you should use <laughs> JavaScript on the server because it's going to be much better than anything you can do with Java. Uh, and on the other hand, those Java guys are also trying to capture the HTML5 applications with uh, frameworks like Prime Faces and stuff like that. So how the world can end? If you remember uh, the topic of my presentation, I call it best of both worlds. So what I'd like the world, uh, the, the, world um, the world to look like after the war is over is that we will choose the best technologies we are being offered from the uh, browser vendors and we will also choose the best technologies we have in the, uh, in the Java camp and we will create a solution that uses those best technologies and delivers something <coughs> extraordinary. So first of all, let's uh, look at HTML5 and uh, CSS. Well, it's fair to say that this is the most portable UI toolkit of the day. Because find, find a device that cannot render HTML and CSS. It's really hard these days. Mobile phones can render it. Uh, even small embedded computers are capable enough to render HTML5. Think of Raspberry Pi. Think even about anything smaller. And if you have a browser, a browser of course can render HTML. Desktop can render HTML as well. So basically HTML and CSS can be rendered uh, everywhere. More can question. I, can I hack on you? Just um, my personal experience of HTML5 and CSS is it's a bit like Java in that you have standard formats, but then you run, for example, HTML on, say, Firefox on Windows Box, and Firefox on Windows Box will use a certain set of libraries underneath. Then you run it on a Linux Box or you run it on an Android device. So you still potentially have, as with Java, you have write once and debug everywhere. So I would <laughs> pick a fight with you on um, how cross-platform it, it actually is. Um, oh yeah. Um, um, I think uh, we can call it like Java. Uh, we can say it's like Java. It's right once and uh, yeah, debug right. everywhere. Exactly. Because, well, uh, the code runs, but it looks a bit different. Uh, and may, uh, the result may look a bit different. So there are differences, indeed. Still, compared to everything else, I think the portability of HTML, uh, well, what would, you, what would you suggest for a more portable toolkit? I, I think portability is good, but in practice you end up, particularly with your JavaScript events, you, you actually have a, a code that says if Android device do something, uh, particularly with Android, for example. So, 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 so actually, now you said JavaScript. Yeah. No, I'm talking about yeah. HTML. I'm not talking about JavaScript at all. So, so for me, yeah. uh, people, of course, automatically, when you say HTML5, people automatically will think about JavaScript. Uh, so don't do it. Just think about HTML and CSS uh, as, uh, as a rendering technology, as something that forms a DOM tree which uh, can somehow be manipulated or doesn't have to. Uh, and this part is he uh, here with us for 25 years. And uh, well, it's sort of bloated in some areas, but otherwise it, uh, it's uh, working well, at least I think. And also, it has great tooling. If you look at all the goodies from Adobe for developers, uh, for designers to uh, work with CSS, work with uh, HTML, uh, well, you cannot compare it with uh, JavaFX. There are no, no tools like that for JavaFX. 
There are no, no tools like that for uh, Qt or uh, GTK libraries. So basically the tooling seems to be really great. And also it supports import and uh, export of uh, assets. So basically with HTML you can do a nice separation between the designer and the devel developer workflow. So basically, <clears throat> well I give you a bit of time to read it. You guys in the back cannot read these, these texts, right? Mm -hmm. Too bad, too bad. You can go in front and, uh, uh, and take a look from here if you want. So for you I will uh, continue and basically <clears throat> uh, just think about HTML as this side of the story. The designer that this creates the UI, that uh, uh, thinks about uh, pixel by pixel uh, uh, look, that, that thinks about uh, responsive design and so on. And on the other hand, we have a developer. And for the developer, well, uh, the us usually HTML is uh, associated with JavaScript. But, well, if we force all developers to be uh, uh, JavaScript developers, then the results will be horrible. Because for me, JavaScript is nothing else than assembly language. It's, uh, uh, it, it was meant <coughs> to be a scripting language, but it's not suitable for uh, writing a huge project you will get into a horrible mess when you try to use JavaScript for large projects. Because it's sort of wonta, write once and never touch again. Uh, because you, the, the, the root cause is tooling is almost impossible. You cannot do automatic refactorings in JavaScript. If you try to, things will break. And that's, that's the reason why you shouldn't touch what you wrote. Uh, but of course, this, this works on a, on, the, on a small scale. If you have a small application and you want to just script there something, that's okay. But if you want to create a 10,000 lines application in JavaScript, you, the results will probably be really horrible. But of course, JavaScript is good because these days, right ones, run anywhere, can be more easily achieved with JavaScript than with Java, because JavaScript really runs everywhere. Uh, while Java has problems in a browser because it's being uh, banned, the, the Java plugin is being banned uh, uh, from uh, being included in, uh, in, the, in browsers. So here is the description of the Java situation. Right once from anywhere was our vision, but somehow it, uh, we, we have forgotten about that vision. Uh, Java really concentrated a lot on uh, making it easy to be executed on servers. <coughs> That's where it shines. <coughs> Java IDE is, uh, is a name for robustness, um, or for, uh, for uh, correctness, and uh, so on. So uh, I think that's okay. But on the client side, well, uh, we have Swing, we have Java FX, but it's just a desktop technology. Running something like that or on a mobile phone or uh, on a tablet, well, that's not that easy. But on the other hand, Java is really strong in tooling. For 20 years, uh, various companies were trying to fight between each other to capture the Java developer heart. And pro so, so we were working on that means, but of course, IBM was trying to kidnap Java from some microsystems by uh, launching the Eclipse project. So the competition between these two and uh, these days also IntelliJ, which is heavily supported by, uh, um, by Google uh, to, to become Android Studio, basically. So the competition is good because the result is uh, fantastic tooling with perfect refactorings, with code completion which is reliable, various 
tools to verify quality of your code, uh, support for testing, enormous amount of libraries. So Java is great. Uh, it's a bit verbose, some people say, but it's not unfixable. Uh, as you could see uh, on the introduction of, of lambdas into JDK 8, well, the language can be made less verbose. So, now, I would even say now it is less verbose than, uh, than JavaScript. Because if you want to do JavaScript in Lambda, you need to prefix the, uh, uh, the Lambda block with uh, keyboard function. In Java, you don't need this prefix, so Java is eight letters that more effective. So the question is, can we somehow merge HTML5 and CSS, but replace JavaScript and put, the, put Java instead of JavaScript there? And I think we can. I was uh, working on it uh, for NetBeams to, to really somehow allow us to write parts of NetBeams in a way that we can run them inside of NetBeams, but also take them away and run them on uh, mobile devices or even a browser. And uh, Tony Atto picked that up, uh, picked that work up, and uh, continue, uh, created the term Duke script. And uh, he basically was awarded uh, at the last Java one with an award for uh, the biggest contribution to NetBeams community. And even uh, the Java one uh, master of ceremony, Stephen Chin, uh, gave, gave uh, him uh, a quote that Duke script is the lightweight Java effects, the lightweight UI library he was always dreaming uh, of. So, enough of talking, and uh, I should probably do a demo. <laughs> 